So there's a good bit of math involved in figuring out the dimensions of the hob and the dimensions of the worm, but I sat down with the machinery's handbook, plugged it all into a spreadsheet, and figured out that a 7 TPI worm is going to give me just about the outside diameter that I need. It's a little bit under that, but there's a little bit of room to fudge it. So I'm all set up to cut a 7 TPI thread here. Uh, I have an Acme thread cutting tool that I ground. It also works out that this needs to be a left-hand thread in order for when it's rotating right to turn the side of the table by the crank away from it. So I'm going to be cutting going away from the chuck. Do the paranoia check here. That looks good. Uh, I didn't engage the thread dial at the right point, but I think I'm still okay. I don't think I ruined anything. So, I get lazy sometimes, and when I'm doing parts that just need to mate with each other, I'll usually pick a thread that's a multiple of eight, so I don't really have to pay attention to when I engage the half nut when I'm threading it. The problem with that is, when I start doing something like this, I do a couple passes and then forget that I need to pay attention to the thread dial and engage it at the wrong point. But, most of the threads are formed up pretty well still, and this section is good, so I'm going to just use this section as much as I can, and I just cut off the ones that were really buggered up. I decided I wanted to straighten up the back side of that flute a little bit, the cutting edge of the flute, just so the valleys are nice and squared up. So I'm going to go back in with a quarter inch ball mill. And then the last thing I want to do is just relieve the back of it a little bit.
Well, there it is. As long as I can make this thing reasonably hard, I think it should cut. I gave the hob the usual home shop torch, quench, temper, treatment, and apparently I'm supposed to do this to it. it seems reasonably hard now. Should be good to go. I've run into a difficult but not unresolvable problem when I took the tool post off and set the table on here where I actually want to hob the gear, which is this line, is quite a bit above center. So instead of being able to mount it onto the compound, I'm going to have to take the compound off and make something to mount it onto here and then just space it up to the right height. Hmm. Close. Not quite there yet. There we go. So this thing's probably a little bit nicer than it needs to be for this. But if you're doing a gag to make one, you might as well make it nice. And it's probably one of those things that could be useful later down the road. So it's got a half inch reamed hole in the bottom to sit onto the register on here and to register this pin and then a 5 8 thread above that. And that just threads down in there. I had planned out a very elaborate system of nuts on here to be able to adjust the height and get it right where I wanted. But it turns out it came out just the right height anyway. I don't think I can get it a whole lot closer than it is. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I've got the lathe running as slow as we can. So I'm lucky when it goes in back and hits that hob, we'll see this thing start to spin. Everything just barely fits here. So that went more how I thought it would than how I hoped it would. The good news is that hob does cut and we actually got some teeth that are pretty well formed up, but I ran into it just not repeating in some spots, not lining up and just stripping out large chunks of it. It was probably pretty silly to try it on that the first time, but I hoped it would work and if not I was my plan is to just turn this down, put another piece on there. I still have all this that I can use to make more. So I'm going to try to make the gear and then put it on. This time around I used the same tool that I used for cutting the hob to gash the blank for the gear. That should give the hob a lot more to bite into so it won't slip as much. I think this should work pretty well. These are cut to 45 thousandths deep. Each pass going back and forth was 5 thousandths, so it took nine passes on each one. 72 of these, 648 passes. Got a couple blisters on the hand, but this handle looks phenomenal now. I'm a lot happier with this setup, but just to be on the safe side, I'm turning this by hand for the first couple passes to make sure that everything's lining up properly. Doing this I'm realizing that one of my issues is that these flutes on the hob are too wide so there's a big area here where there's not really any engagement in the workpiece. I think as it gets cut in more, it should be okay. And if not, I'll just do it this way. Let's turn the lathe on and see what happens.
I'm starting to get some pretty decent teeth forming up, so I want to go ahead and measure. And so what I'm shooting for is the throat diameter, which is the distance across the thing right at the bottom of the little scallops here. It actually turns out to be a little bit tricky to measure because these calipers don't actually reach the whole diameter depth. My micrometer does actually reach in there, but you're not actually measuring that inside, you're measuring wherever these points are contacting. So to figure this out, I drew this up in CAD rather than trying to do the math. This is my throat diameter. These are the little scallops for the teeth where the hob is cutting in. And based on quarter inch heads on the micrometer, it comes up with 3.445. The problem with this is this is actually bigger than the outside diameter of the gear, which means that it's never actually forming up to that height. So plan C or D, or I figured out how deep I can actually measure with the calipers. This isn't to scale and where that's going to hit on the circle. So if I'm measuring it like that, this is the dimension I want to hit. So this obviously isn't going to give me a perfect measurement. There are other factors because I'm not measuring directly on the tip, but I'm measuring on where the teeth are. So I'm actually coming up with about 370. Uh, and I am actually losing a little bit here. It's going to be spaced out just a hair more. Um, so I think I'm going to give it another 5 thou and call it good. This will be five thousandths off the radius. There should be enough material outside of the worm gear that I can make the nut to retain the table in the base. Before I cut the gear off, I'm going to go ahead and do that while I have a good way to hold it here. This is just one of those things where thinking through the order of operations is going to make things easier later. I'm going to bore this, thread it, cut it to size, part it off, and then part off the worm gear. Now I'm going to bore out the worm gear and cut it off and get it ready to press onto the top of the table. Should be about two or three thousandths interference fit on here. Get a little green Loctite. This is by no means the perfect worm gear. I wish I hadn't gashed these so long. But I was thinking it was going to take me a couple tries to get it. In the end, I think it'll work. Now that I know how to do it, the next one I can do will be better. And just to finally lock this thing together, I'm just going to ream it out and do a couple of pins. I don't know that it's really necessary. I don't really think those were going anywhere anyway, but it's definitely not now.
This is a lot longer piece than I need right now, but while I've got it in the lathe, I might as well clean it up, get it ready for whatever I need next. I've got this choked up in the collet chuck now, and I've got it turned to 625, which is the diameter of the worm, and then I'm just gonna turn this part down to half inch for the shaft. I don't really know how long that shaft needs to be, so I'm just making it a good bit longer than I think it should be. This stuff is machining like some sort of alloy steel where it's just long, hot chips that don't really wanna break. Since I'm making this up as I go, I decided to make this shaft 3 8 instead of a half inch. I think that'll just give me a little bit more room in the eccentric. That and I also overshot cutting it and cut it under a half inch. And with that, I think I'm going to wrap this video up. I hope you enjoyed watching me muddle through this as much as I enjoyed muddling through it.